Hey guys, in this video, I will show you how to make a low poly anime character. We will be focusing more on creating the mesh rather than texturing the model since the basics in this video can be applied to other styles of low poly models as well. So, it would look something like this. Let's get into the video. For this model, I made sure to occupy the middle grid to make sure that the model would have enough pixels for later texturing. As usual, we start with a basic head shape, then with the help from the references, I eyeball how much horizontal loop cuts are needed for it to have the anime style nose. It was a bit difficult since I am more familiar with realistic proportions, but in the end, I was able to get the right shape. If you are making a model similar to this, I suggest that you take your time on this and not rush the process. Make sure to look at the references from time to time. Since this model has a lot of curved surfaces, using the vertex tool with the mirror tool would help you get the job done a lot easier and faster. At this part, I realized that I had to give the nose triangle meshes instead of square ones, since if I don't, the mesh can sometimes look weird at certain angles. As you can see, after some time, I was able to get a pretty good smooth and curved chin for the head model. After doing some more tweaking for a bit and moving some points from here to there, I was satisfied with how the shape of the head looked like. After that, I moved on to measuring the right proportions for the character. Like before, I always use cubes as guides for body proportions since cubes does a better job than other shapes. After getting the proportions, I used the blocked out cubes as the base mesh for making the upper body. Quick tip, when you are making low poly body parts for your model, always try your best to use the least faces as much as possible. It may be annoying at some time, but this is a good practice to keep in mind, since low poly models can always rely on great texturing for other details. Here, I was debating how I would do the chest part of the model. Since the reference has a more curved chest, I added another horizontal loop cut to give it more curve. However, I could always do the PS1 Lara Croft chest for this model. Since I wanted to make this model simple to rig, I did not make a stomach for the model. I went straight into making her skirt which was pretty simple to make. I first had to make sure that the crotch area was at the right place and that it looked alright. With one horizontal loop cut, I was able to shape the butt for the model. For the ears, instead of a cylinder, I opted for a cube this time around. I give it the basic loop cuts, shaped it and that's about it. You can see here that I rotated the ear. It is so that it would look exactly the same as the ears in the references. The ears had to look good in many angles so rotating it helped a lot. I then went on to make some other changes that would help the model look a lot better. Now here comes the most difficult part of the model. Making the spiky hair. I first tried using a cube to block out the overall shape of the top hair area. I thought that by doing this, I would be able to control how the surface would curve and where the other hair spikes would be placed. One technique that I did was to make a temporary face texture for the model. It is so that I would be able to accurately place the right hair parts for the model. Here, you will see my first attempt with making the front hair bangs. At the time, I didn't know how it would shape the bangs or how many loop cuts are needed to make it look decent, so I just went with my guts. Unfortunately, this method was full of problems so I eventually had to do the hair again from scratch. 
Let's skip to the right way of doing this hairstyle. First, duplicate the head mesh then separate only the top part of the head. This will become the base for the hair. I just close the bottom part by flipping a duplicated mesh and connecting all its vertices. Now, I slowly shaped it to its general hair shape. I moved certain edges and vertices to match the actual hair curve present in the references. I then added some triangles to better give the hair its actual shape. For the bangs, my first idea was to just chunk a pyramid onto the hair. It didn't work so I just went and do the other hairs first. Again, I used a cube to just block out the side bangs. Then I used another cube to wrap around the back of the head. Since the back hair has volume to it, I used loop cuts to be able to shape its general volume. I tried to make it as simple as possible to not make the work difficult. Here, it's a matter of connecting the pieces seamlessly while retaining the overall look and shape of the hair model. It is a tedious process, so do take your time in this phase. If you notice in the references, the side bangs has curves to it. To make these, adding loop cuts would do the trick. However, I did not like the shape of the rectangle mesh so what I did was replace it with a pyramid mesh with the same loop cuts. Then I continued to shape the side bangs and just duplicate slash adjust it for the other side. Here, I am shaping the hairline of the model. This will become the basis of where I would be able to shape the front bangs. Instead of extruding the plane, I deleted it and made a pyramid from it. This made the hair process a lot more doable, so I implemented this learning with the other hair spikes. Also, I decided not to shape every single hair spike that the character has. It is so that the model would not look too out of place with other low poly models. I implemented the same technique for the larger hair spikes, and it worked like a charm. 
I did find myself putting way too much planes on the hair, but I was able to catch myself and later fix that problem. From this point on, it was just a tedious task to be completed. Do take your time on this as this is what would make your character recognizable. After a couple of hours of shaping and figuring stuff out, I was in a place where I am satisfied with how the hair looked. So I moved on and made the goggles. For the jacket, I did not want to mess with the chest mesh so I made a new mesh for the hoodie.
These next parts are pretty easy. I made sure that it was easy to understand. So with that, I will see you in the end of the video.
Alright, things here are about to get wrapped up. I hope the video helped you on making your own low poly anime characters. There won't be texturing section for this video since I would be making a separate short tutorial on doing so. Also, thank you for the love and support. The channel has never been better. I appreciate all your likes and comments in all of my videos. Thank you so much and see you on the next video.